Well, it is hard to un- understand what's up with that, and I think that was one of the motivations for my wanting to make the film, um, is uh, a, a real sense of compassion um, for people who who suffered this injustice. Not only are they suffering a, a, an illness, which is completely devastating them, but they're also suffering a, a social illness. Um, and they're outcast in some cases, even within their own families. And many people have told me that uh, that the film um, has been instrumental in, in helping people in their family or in their social circles understand what they've been going through. That not until that that um, uh, having that validation on uh, on screen um, were were people really able to understand what they've been going through. Another narrative in the film is about the persecution of doctors who aggressively treat chronic Lyme disease with long-term antibiotics. So you have uh, a medical establishment that says there is no such thing as chronic Lyme disease, and then you have these people who treat it with great success, and then they're persecuted by the medical establishment. Once again, what's going on there? Well, boy, it's a really big question, and... um, um, it's hard to sort of put it in a sound bite, but basically there's there's two camps. One camp says um, Lyme disease is easy to diagnose and easy to treat, and the other camp says, no, it's not easy to diagnose and it's not easy to treat. As a matter of fact, we need to treat with long-term antibiotics, not just the recommended two to four weeks, but sometimes months and months. Now, if you're going to be treating for that long, it's going to, one thing, it's going to cost a lot of money. And who's paying for that? The insurance companies are paying for that. Insurance companies don't want to pay for that. And there's no reason that they're going to want to pay for that um, if they're if, if the, uh, an important governmental institution um, is, is, um, is sort of on their side saying that chronic Lyme disease doesn't exist. So they've, they've got, an, they've got a, a justification, a rationalization for um, denying treatment. Um, but I think the greater question is why, um, why are some of the people who for so long have been involved in um, the research for Lyme disease intransigent about the chronicity of Lyme disease? Um, and why are, they, why are they going after also um, going after the doctors who are treating with for long term? And when we look at that, we're really looking at um, the commercialization of medicine, um, and we're looking at um, at conflicts of interest in medicine. That the people who te- who are benefiting from the guidelines, um, the Lyme treatment guidelines, um, are the ones who are writing the guidelines, and that's sort of a, 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 a sort of general. Um, um, explanation for, for what is going on. And as a matter of fact, the Attorney General of Connecticut um, looked at this very issue and discovered substantial conflict of interest in the, um, uh, among the, the authors of the Lyme Treatment Guidelines um, in the IDSA, which is the Infectious Disease Society of America, and forced them to reconvene a guidelines writing committee with people who had no conflict of interest, um, and um, the Lyme community is hoping that this will make a difference, and we'll see. He comes all, he comes across as a real hero in the film, which I hope a lot of people go see. We're talking about the film Under Our Skin, and its di- director and producer is Andy Abrahams Wilson. Another. Uh, Something that I found incredibly interesting and important in this film, and again, uh, something that I, I didn't know about, nobody knows about it, is the potential link between Lyme disease and Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's. That mm-hmm. is huge, and there yeah. seems to be some evidence for it. Yeah, it, it is huge, and I'm glad you asked that question. Um, that, again, that was one of the things that, that um, got me really interested in this. Um, is the the stakes are huge. Um, So many of the people that I've interviewed, so many of the people with Lyme disease, have at some point been diagnosed with uh, a sort of list of of other conditions, including 
um, chronic f fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, lupus, multiple sclerosis, ALS, Parkinson's, and as you say, even Alzheimer's. Um, and specifically, um, one of the things that, that's very interesting to me and to some other research is the link between Lyme disease and neurodegenerative illness. We have one scientist in the film who's been studying this link for 20 years and um, has found substantial connections. For instance, in um, the brains of uh, 7 out of 10 people who died from Alzheimer's disease, and these were brains that were taken from the Harvard University Brain Bank, uh, he found um, DNA of the um, bacteria that causes Lyme, 7 out of 10. And um, his, his thesis basically is that Lyme does play a role in neurodegenerative illness such as Alzheimer's and uh, as well as multiple sclerosis and ASL, ALS rather. And as a matter of fact, many of the Lyme treating physicians will tell you that, uh, that they see patients who have been diagnosed with MS or ALS, and then once they get the treatment, the, the diagnosis and treatment for Lyme disease, they start to get better. Now, um, it's not to say that everybody who's diagnosed with MS or ALS or any of those uh, conditions has Lyme disease nor that they will get better by treat, treating them for Lyme disease. But it's a fascinating discovery and a fascinating connection which potentially could, could save thousands and thousands of lives. So it really needs to be looked at and studied further. So what are your goals for getting the film out, not only to the public, but to the medical establishment? It seems like there's a tremendous potential for education of all sectors of society and w by your film? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the goal here is awareness. Um, there, the, 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 the Lyme community and the Lyme literate physicians have been fighting for years trying to um, create change, and it hasn't happened. And I, my belief is that the change has to happen from the ground up, that it's going to be about awareness. So it's not going to be um, just getting more research because the research dollars are just going to go into the same hands as the people that have been getting it for, for, for years. Um, it really needs to come from the people, and it's going to be by, um, by means of what I, I think is a, a major media event which is our film, to help create that so, that so that it will enter into public consciousness and change public perception and um, that people will demand answers. And when the people demand um, that their health um, be taken seriously, then, then we're going to start to get answers. And, and a good, I think a good comparison is the, the, the AIDS epidemic, and that's really the same way that that happened. The change happened for AIDS. Andy Abrahams Wilson is director and producer of the documentary Under Our Skin, which screens at the Santa Fe Film Festival this week. It's screening on Thursday, the 4th of December at 1245 in the afternoon at the Forum on the campus of the College of Santa Fe, and once again on Saturday at 545. There's much more to talk about, but people can just go ahead and see the film. They can also check it out at the website, which is underourskin.com. Andy, thank you so much for being with us here on the Santa Fe Radio Cafe. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Santa Fe Radio Cafe. My name is Mary Charlotte. KSFR screens, uh, streams live on the web at ksfr.org. You can reach me at radiocafe at ksfr.org or leave a message at 428-1528. We're podcasting at the website santaferadiocafe.org where you can hear the show anytime you want thanks to Santa Fe's Dot Foil Computer Services. And you can subscribe to the show on iTunes. 